test. Test, test. Test. Ooh, that's a big delay. It's a big delay. Hmm.
Lucky for you, that's where we're starting, because uh, in TGC2, autogens are actually the way to go. Uh, making it from scratch, that's, uh, that's out. It's old hat. How you doing, Chad? My wife is smiling at me because I know the first names of people online. Yeah, I know. It's it's kind of ridiculous how much this uh this game has taken over our life. Like uh I'm so excited for TGC2. I've already told I've already told Cassie that uh she's not really going to see me. Yeah, no sweat. You got about a 10 second delay, so I may not be replying to what you think I'm replying to. What time do you get to play the game? <laughs> I've already got it downloaded, ready to go. Yep, I'm I'm good to go. I'm trying to decide how much sleep I want to get tonight. Like I said, I got my kid and I can just watch him as he sleeps all night, so we'll see. I gotta be up all day with him tomorrow though, so we'll see. He's trying to sleep right now. He looks pissed at me because I'm talking. All right, we might as well go ahead and get started. We'll see if anybody else trickles in. Uh, so, welcome to Sculpting with Scampi. Uh, this is a design question and answer show that I will be hosting every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, it will run for an hour until 9 p.m. Um, my name is Seth Campion, gamertag Scampi00. And I am joined by my wife and infant son, 10 feet to my right. Um, every show, we will um, answer a letter from the community, discuss a topic of the week, and then open it up for a Q&A. Uh, any questions you have, I'll uh, demonstrate them live. So, um, we are four hours away from the TGC2 release for those of us that don't have Steam, and I am so ridiculously excited. I have played this game more than any other game I've ever purchased. Um, it's definitely worth my money. I could have probably bought TGC2, never played it, and still gotten my money's worth from TGC1. Uh, so for the record, I'm open to a name change, by the way, so if anyone has a better suggestion, please say so. Sculpting with uh, Scampi just doesn't sit right with me for some reason. Um, so every episode, we will open with a, uh, with a Dear Scampi letter. This is a uh, Dear Sally type letter from the community uh, about a problem. Uh, and I will uh, do my best to answer it. So, uh, so for the first one, uh, we have uh, a Dear Scampi letter from forum member Scarpacci. And uh, Scarpacci, if you don't know, is another excellent designer on the forums. Uh, Scarpacci writes, uh, Dear Scampi, I have planted some pretty azaleas in my flower bed this summer, but I'm having trouble with some of the neighborhood rabbits that keep eating them. Scampi, what can I do to keep the rabbits away so that my azaleas can grow nice and pretty? Uh, well, Scarpacci, unfortunately, this is a design question and answer show, so I can't help you with your problem. But what I can help you with is uh, getting into the right frame of mind as a course designer uh, heading into TGC2. So, sorry, Scarpacci, can't answer that one. Um, I'm going to start out most episodes in the designer to go over actual, real, concrete techniques. Uh, but for the first episode, and since TGC2 isn't out yet, I figured we would start with something philosophical instead of, uh, instead of concrete. So, uh, stick with me here. Um... I'm coming to uh, to this show on uh, a course called Emerald Heights Resorts and Marina. This is my third uh, course that I ever designed for TGC2. And it's pretty ambitious. Uh, I've got some great sculpting back here. I learned quite a bit about sculpting when I did this track. Um, I've got some 
Interesting par threes in the background. That's an island green covered completely in rocks. Nice lighthouse walk out there. Um, there's a marina out there with boats, ships, all sorts of stuff like that with a whole bunch of courses going that way. Um, and at the time, I thought that this was really ambitious. I put so much work into this course, um, and I really thought that I had kind of arrived uh, when I made this course. I think I got 13 plays. I think it was barely accepted into the TGC community. Um, and honestly, it's just, it's not a good course. Um, it's actually really terrible. Um, pretty much every course that I've ever released, I have said to myself, you know, this is it. This is the good course. This is, um, this is fantastic. And, uh, it just never, never pans out. I always learn something different. There's always something that sticks out to me. I always have a mess up somewhere. Um, so what I'm trying to say is going forward into TGC2, um, if you're going to be designing, I just want you guys to keep an open mind. Like, uh, know that when you release something, like, you can still have some kind of room for improvement. If someone gives you feedback, make sure that you, um, make sure you listen to it, be open to it, even if you don't agree with it. Uh, make sure you try new things, change up what you're doing. You may find a technique you like better. Um, listen to, you know, different designers, different tutorials, um, and just keep practicing at it, because, uh, what you probably have just put out can probably be improved in some way. You'll find something else that you like. So um, that's it. That actually went pretty quick. Um, we can open it up for a Q&A. So I will back out. Uh, does anybody have any questions? I'm not sure who's watching. In case no one has any questions right away or no one's following, I do have something. Uh, Jacob Kessler asked a question uh, earlier in the week about mountains, so we can start off with mountains. Um, how we doing, Fusion? Um, so I'll have a basic plot every week that'll be open. What I'll do is I just won't save every time I open. Um, we have a nice fancy uh, title going here, Sculpting with Scampi. This is how uh, high-tech we get here. That's all sorts of flowers there. Um, so I guess we can open it up uh, with mountains, unless nobody has anything else. Because mountains are pretty easy. I know, right? Doesn't that look good, Chad? I spent uh, I spent a spot quality uh, like five minutes on that. I think my favorite part of it is the uh, S and the C over there being completely different sizes compared to everything else. It just scrolls bigger in size as it goes right. Yeah, I know that lovely hidden tree. Hate it. One of the worst glitches. Um, so um, when you're designing mountains, uh, first thing you kind of want to decide is whether you want um, really jagged terrain or whether you want rolling hills. And those are going to depend on uh, what brush you want. I'm going to lay a phantom hole over here just so I have some more options when I'm running around. I won't have anything to do with anything. Um, so <clears throat> I think the most important thing is to figure out what each tool does, um, what the blue lines mean. Um, basically the the start of the blue line on the inside going towards the outside of the blue line is where you're going to have your um, decline or incline up to the point. So if I raise this up to 20 feet, um, the top of the hill is 20 foot tall, and the blue is everything trying to meet up to that 20 point, uh, to, to that 20 foot point. So. If I do the same thing with a brush that's higher, the edges won't be as sharp. And this will be important in a second. Some people probably already know this, but the edges won't be as sharp. So just in comparison, there's much uh, softer of a, of a decline. If I do it with the... Um, if I do it with the sharpest brush... Um, sharpest brush, meaning the uh, the blue line there, and take that up to 20 feet. You're going to have a really, really, really steep decline. Very, very jagged edges. And in my opinion, I just don't know where you would really see this that much in uh, in actual nature. Like, it just doesn't look realistic at all. Um, if I were designing, if I were advising you guys, I would advise to stay away from the 
finely sharpened tools because I just don't think they look incredibly realistic, especially the higher up you get. Um, what I like to advise is to work with as soft of tools as possible. If I'm making a giant hill, I will actually use these incredibly soft brushes um, and then I will make um, you know, extend it as far up as possible. This is a pretty well raised land mass. Now it's pretty hilly, but that looks like a much more natural mountain. Now the way to get it to look far more natural is to add all sorts of uh, bumps and ridges along it. Um, this is one way of doing it. Um, you have um, different types of mountains that you can create, but I know, right? Brushes? Well, It'll look really pretty at the end, and I haven't talked about any uh, haven't talked about any uh, brands. You know, like this is uh, this is the Maybelline brush brand. The more of these little brushes that I uh, that I raise, the more natural and hilly this is going to look, especially when you add trees to it later. Once we get down to ground level, that's starting to look natural and hilly. So that's one way to do it. Um, it can be just a little easier. I'm going to take the plants and grass off. Because this is taking too long. So another way to do it to get um, much more jagged mountains um, is actually to go with a couple of these brushes over here on the third page. Um, you can either be at the top, you see Sculpt Terrain, Flatten Tool, you can either be under Flatten or you can be under Raise. Um, I prefer Flatten for this and I can explain the difference between them in a second. Um, these four brushes down here tend to produce pretty good mountains. I think that these three are okay um, and this one is probably the best. Uh, the reason for that is, is it has very soft brush edges on the outside um, and it's going to create... Um, a really gradual and jagged step down at the same time. Uh, if you look at this one, this one is still very jagged along the outside edges. However, there's that blue brush on the outside isn't incredibly thick, so it's still going to be a very steep decline. Um, this brush will create um, a very uh, gradual decline because that blue brush is incredibly full. Um, and this one's a pretty good mix too. One side will be a little more um, rolling than the other and the other side will be very jagged. Um, I like to use this brush on the bottom right for my mountains, either in flatten or in raise there at the top. Um, but flatten, if I go out here and I want to make a pretty big mountain, let's say we want to do the mountain range in the background here, um, raise it up to however you want. Now right now that's going to be flat and jagged and it's going to all be one height going across. We'll want to change that eventually. Yep. Yep, Chad's exactly right. This is this creates a really good desert look. Um, so we're going to apply there, and it's going to create one going straight across. Now you can see how it's jagged. It's got all sorts of bumps and ridges. This is how mountains look in real life. This is uh, wind and water and all sorts of stuff creating crevices and valleys. This is perfect. But uh, it's still not realistic because that's all one height. It's very uniform. Um, so either do flatten or raise again, go to the exact same brush, and you're just going to want to outline the brush um, elsewhere. There's no real science or rhyme and reason to this. Honestly, it can be something that's completely and totally random. Um, so we're going to outline over uh, the mountain here, and we're going to raise up. And if you look from the side, you can see that that part on the left is now going to be higher than that part on the right. If I do it in flatten, it's going to try to make all of it one uniform height, or bring it as close down as po or close together as possible, um, which can still look pretty decent. See, looking from right here, that's a pretty decent mountain, not very tall. Um, raise, if you do that, will just raise um, any point that you do that. So it's trying to raise the left side 186 feet, and it's trying to raise the right side 186 feet. And that's your look. <clears throat> Once we bring the trees back up, you have a pretty nice looking mountain. So that's a that's a jagged mountain look as opposed to far over here, kind of a hilly mountain look. That's obviously a very small hill. Um, but that would be how I would create mountains, especially in the background. The farther away, the better, I think. Being right up close to them um, just doesn't look as good, either with the graphics or... Um, Probably wouldn't be a whole lot of golf courses at the foot of a mountain, but you can make it work if you really try. So, 
Um, I think that's all I have for mountains. Um, are there any more questions out there? I can do other stuff. Um, Chad, I'm going to come back to yours in just one second because I actually do have a pretty long answer for that. Um, Fusion, it's definitely tricky to get it right, um, especially with, um, you know, the, the different heights. Like, no matter what you do to a mountain, it's very hard to get it to not affect the fairway um, that you're putting down. Um, so um, I can kind of show you how to do that in a second. Let me uh, let me get to, to Chad's because I actually had wanted to cover that anyways. Um so just hold on one second, Fusion. Oh, no sweat, Titan. Okay, so Fusion, I'm going to cover yours real quick. Um, if you want to build a golf course on the side of a hill, um, I would first set aside... Don't you use the red brush for terrain editing? So the red brush, you can use it, but you, you don't necessarily have to. What the red brush does is helps... Um, when you kind of want to hide something. So think about it as like the, anytime you do a blue brush, you are affecting the layers that you can see. Like this little table right now, this landmass right here is all on the blue level. The red brushes are an invisible layer that you can either bring up or down to hide certain parts. So like the best example of it is like a pot bunker that you want to put rough around. If you place a deep rough circle and then lower the red brush exactly how big that that deep rough circle is around your bunker, the initially the fairway will be seen. But when you take the red brush down, um, it'll have the deep rough shown. So um, I always use for any terrain editing, the blue brushes work just fine. Um, if you're going to be building into the side of a hill, I would take your hill and put it on one side of the map. So let's say we wanted to start it over here. This is where I would raise your hill. So I would extend this soft brush um, to whatever height you wanted to do it. Uh, so let's just say for this purpose, 175. Let's just keep going down. When you talk about it being on the side of a hill, are you talking about the entire course like winds down the hill as you go? Is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, so, so you've got it on the side of the hill right now. So let's say you wanted to... Um, I won't lay down any kind of fairway, but let's say you had your hill right here and you wanted to string a couple of holes that like kind of wind down this hill and keep going. You see what I mean? Like, and you have like another hill going this way and it comes back. Like, let's say you wanted to do something like that. Um, if you lay down a hole, uh, let's see, let's make it um, 400 yards or so. So this red line is going to represent our hole. Now it's not going to be completely um, it's not going to be completely hilly the entire way through. You want to take this uh, this sculpt land tool under flatten uh, either this one or this one. Either of these brushes will work just fine. Um, start at your T box to start with, um, and you're going to apply until it flattens. So you just can hit X, and that should be pretty well applied by now. All right, and you're gonna keep inching forward and hitting X. So every I don't know if you can hear my uh, my little ping there, but um, you're just inching forward a little bit and hitting X, inching a little bit and hitting X. And what this is doing is flattening out just this one side of the hole. I think it's going up just a smidge. Um, but it's just flattening out this one side of the hole so that you have the hill continuing off on your left and the big hill on your right. Uh, is that helping at all? Uh, 
Um, you can do this like any number of times. Um, I'm gonna finish doing this real quick, and I'll show you the I'll show you the finished product here in a second. I'm trying to think, there's a course that did this already. I can't remember for the life of me uh, who the designer was. I think your name was Wendy. Um, one of the only female designers I think I've ever seen on the game. But uh, all of hers had something to do with Kettle, I remember. Um, but she had a really, really hilly course one time. She did a pretty good job with it. All right, so you'll have to imagine the fairway there, but if you're looking at it now, we do have a nice straight land. Yep, there you go. Yeah, the rookery is another good one, too. Um, you've got nice straight land, hill on your right, downhill on your left. If you wanted to, we could do another hole, like, right here, and it would be the same thing. You could kind of see it from the tee box down there, but that's how you would be able to do that. Anytime you want to flatten land like that, have a nice big stretch, that's the way to go about it. Go to the flatten land tool and just keep uh, going out. Um, all right, so, uh, Titan, I can talk about, uh, fairways for days, because I actually just figured out a new way to do fairways, um, and I think it's going to change a little bit once TGC2 comes out, um, in the next, you know, four hours. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to eventually switch to the new way that TGC2 has it, or whether I'm going to stay with my own. Um, but I really like the way that I started doing it. On the last one I did, uh, Sovereign Valley, I probably put down 14 holes the old way and then experimented with this way, like, uh, for four of them. And I really like the look of them. So I'll go, uh, I'll go with what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye hill. But same way though, it's just, that's the way to flatten it. Start out at what height you want and then just keep it going. I'm going to delete this hole real quick. Actually, no, I'll keep that. Okay. So... Um, we'll talk about all three ways that I've been doing here recently. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, maybe I'm going to talk about those three. Maybe I'm going to uh, change it. Someone commented on one of my activities. Interesting. Um, okay, let's see. I have no idea what that means. What activity am I doing? All right. So the one way that I have found to work... Um, well, first of all, I think you should always pick your starting point. Um, you probably already know this, Chad, but, um, you know, 120 to 150 away, like bring it close. I think it's really nice to look at the, the fairway up close, uh, or else you're just looking at 200, 220 yards of just like terrain. Um, but the, the one way or the, the first way that I, that I like to do it was to figure out like whatever kind of curve I was going to use. Um, and again, using the distance tool, like, let's say I just wanted to bring it out this way how you doing golfer so that's like my basis and then I'm gonna um, pick uh, like however wide I want the fairways to be so like I, I try to stay within 30 so I'll extend it 15 this way 15 that way um, and I'll go the entire length of the fairway kind of doing that. And then I'll just lay fairway options in between that. Um, I've kind of gone away from doing this. Um, yeah, no, it looks really good. I'm so pumped. It's three hours and 39 minutes away. Uh, unless apparently the guys from Steam, uh, won't get it until uh, tomorrow afternoon, which kind of sucks. Um, so instead of this method, um, I've started figuring out, um, if you ever look at Taste's uh, fairways, they are absolutely beautiful. And one of the reasons is he mostly uses circles and then figures out a way to connect the fairway. Um, so I'm going to kind of do what I did there a second ago, but I'm going to do it a lot more basic. <clears throat> and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay down a series of circles. Uh, there's not really a whole bunch of planning to this, but... Um, once you know about how wide you want your fairways to be. <clears throat> so we'll do it at a 25% clip there. Um, 
lay down a circle, either the long oval or this circle here. How you doing, sir? Um, you want to set an edge right about there, and then put another circle um, somewhere farther down the track. Um, let's say like right here or so. So to get a nice wave through your fairway, um, set up circles all along the path. So like at your starting point, you would have another circle. You can either use this one, this one, uh, this fat edge. We'll use this fat edge, I like the fat edge. <clears throat> all right. So then you're going to want to connect them. Um, you want to try to have as few, I, at least I think, as few indents as possible. Um, I used to tell people to use this tool to lay them down, um, but sometimes if you try to stretch between two points, um, you get too big with your tool. So you'd have to, uh, don't you hate when you get too big with your tool? Um, so you have to, you know, make all these little tiny cuts. And if you look at it, this is just a really awkward looking fairway. Like the fairway shouldn't go in and out this much between that small of a point. You want to try to have it smooth, um, you know, nice smooth contours. So instead to connect, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, <laughs> Mitch, get out of here. Um, so to connect uh, those points instead, once you have your circles, you have them about as wide as you want, uh, use that fairway option. Use this brush right here. And I'm going to take those trees back down. I don't know why they came back up. Use that fairway option to curl the fairway back to that point. So all I'm going to do is just slightly change this every time. All I'm doing is slowly adjusting and applying, slowly adjusting and applying, slowly adjusting and applying. Uh, I think that's big cats. It's pretty good. Yeah, so see, from this point right here, and you can obviously do this uh, like however you like. So I could you know, put like another circle here, another circle here, or I could round this bend out really big. Um, but if you look at that, that's a really nice, smooth curve. Like, it's very, very clean. Um, so I've actually been doing that one for a while, and I've, I'll, I'll continue to do it. Um, but um, I finally went around and tried what Taste has been doing, um, and I really think it's a good idea. So I'm going to show you that here real quick. Oh, that's right, that's right. Uh, I think... Uh, I think... Uh, Sobel is big cats. That's right. That's because overrated knows what he's doing, though. It's so weird calling people by their forum names. All right. So instead, um, I start from the green back. So I, I usually set my green somewhere at 40 by uh, 25 yards, something like that. I mean, as long as you start with taste method, you can't really go too far wrong. He knows what he's doing. Well, you like those kinds of courses. All right, so I don't really know what kind of green I'm doing there, but um, let me just make one of these real quick. All right, so now I got a green um, taste method, and I think it's really good, is to literally draw um, your fairway with the design tool. Just constantly tap X and just, you know, make whatever kind of, uh, whatever kind of, like, shape you want. But I think it's, it's good because, like, let's say, okay, so let's say I want to do, um, like, a tiny strip of fairway coming through here, and I want to put a bunker here. So it's a good way to start 
to start swinging from the outside. So now I know that my fairway is going to, to loop back there. Same thing on this end. So now I have a good foundation for fairway. So for here, I can kind of decide what I want to do with it. I think I'm going to loop my fairway back around this way. And because I want that nice circle shape, I'm just going to loop it back this way as I go. Um, so let's see if I can not do that. And obviously you can change this up as much as you need to. But from there, this is now how my fairway is going to look. And literally all I have to do is go back and do, uh, you know, color in the lines basically. Um, so I would put um, a fairway here, just a circle. Again, it's usually a circle. It's basically what I was doing a second ago, except it's a little bit more of an outline to it. But I don't know. I think it's a pretty quick way of doing it. Um, if I wanted to do the whole thing, let's see, where's my starting point there? you have the nice start of a fairway there. And then all you gotta do is just go back and color it in. I think that's the method I'm starting to prefer, Chad. I think uh, it's kind of similar to what they're introducing with um, with uh, sp uh, splines, I think they're called. Um, but I think I'm, I might just stay with this. I just really like the look of this type of course, or this type of, uh, this type of method of doing it. Yep. Yep, I, I don't know. I can't really tell from the streams. I don't or from the stream. It doesn't look like it's going to be. I don't know. Like it's going to provide you with as many points to do it, or is, it'll be a lot of filling in, or I'm not sure. It'll definitely take care of the uh, take care of the outside of it though. Um, you just have to kind of fill in the middle. But that's it. That's how I've been doing fairways. I think they work pretty well. I can see a bunker there, a bunker there. The other way you could do it is you could put your bunkers down first, and then you could draw around it, which I think is what he does. I think he, I think he uh, actually sculpts his bunkers too. Like I think he does this kind of thing where he decides what kind of shape he wants and fills it in later. But I haven't gotten that point yet. Might do that soon. Bunker there, bunker there, bunker there, bunker there, and I got a golf course. Uh, okay, I think that covers that. Um, any more questions? Hey, no sweat, Chad. Have a good one. I'll be up till uh, 9, so another 30 minutes. Okay, well, um, I will go ahead, unless nobody else has any questions, and you can free to stop me as soon as, uh, or as much as you want. Uh, but I have some uh, planting tricks that I've kind of learned, so I can show that to you guys. Um, I know this works on PS4. I'm going to assume it works on Xbox. Um, I don't know about PC, but PC plants faster than uh, PS4 and Xbox anyways. Um, but I've kind of figured out uh, some planting tricks, because uh, as sure as, I'm sure as a whole bunch of you guys know, uh, it's difficult to plant on PS4 because I can apply something and it'll take forever until I can actually uh, get it to actually apply. Um, but I found out that you can uh, you can cheat a little bit. Um, so if you take the uh, right or left D-pad and start spinning the uh, whatever object you're working with as long as it can spin, um, because you don't want to uh, have soldier planting. I really hate when I see planting like this because it's lazy. 
it doesn't take a lot of time to just simply rotate it a little bit so you can't see what it looks like. Um, but so start rotating whatever plant you were working with. Get it to a size you want it to be first. I'm going to choose a different one here. Hold on. Uh, so start rotating and then with your thumb start moving in a circle and what you're going to do is constantly tap the X button. You're just going to spam whatever your apply button is and if you do it at the right speed you can actually um, you can actually catch up with it before the PS4 catches up with it. So if I just keep tapping this all these times that I'm hitting the X button it's going to leave a plant and eventually when I stop planting It's going to have all of those planted. They're all facing a different direction. They're all, um, they can be of different sizes, like later on if I do it. Um, you can change colors here. And this is just me kind of goofing around, like you can actually have a, a plan to what you're planting. I'm just kind of uh, going in a circle. But then once you have, like, you know, if you're off to the side, that's a whole bunch of planting. Uh, you can place a whole bunch of rocks in the middle to make it look better. Uh, get some flowers in there. Get another tree in there. Um, and it starts to look pretty natural. Anyways, cool planting trick because uh, that's a whole, whole bunch of plants. Yep. Works with grasses. Uh, definitely easier to do. Makes a, makes a really good look. Uh, you just gotta find out how to how to uh, get that pace down so you can spam it before it uh, before it catches up with you. But it makes the grass look real tall because the, the only other way you can spam tall grass like that, like say it looks really good, is uh, that L3 button, and you can't change the size on that, and it doesn't look as good from a distance. Well, that's only been uh, 34 minutes, but um, I'm kind of out of topics off the top of my head. So unless there's any questions, I will go ahead and end it for the night. Anybody? All right, I guess that's it. Um, I'll be back next Monday. Uh, we'll see if the show can get a little more hype. We can keep these going a little hour long. Um, but for now, I will go ahead and head out. I will put this on YouTube later. Adios, everyone. <laughs>